I want to introduce our next speaker. I'm going to ask you to turn your attention to the screens. Noel Manufo is a senior pastor of Light Covenant Church. He's a pastor and teacher of God's word with a mandate to spread the knowledge of God's love by precept and by example. He is committed to planting churches that proclaim the love of God in their communities, to the training and mentoring of emerging ministers, and to social transformation through community impact projects. Along with his lovely wife, Ade Bukola Manufo, he oversees all Covenant Light Churches worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, from the land of Fufu and Pepe, put your hands together for Pastor Noel Manufo. Somebody, somebody say, what a wow. <laughs> it's so, I'm so excited. This, this is somebody that I've been longing to get in front of us for a long time. And I'm so grateful that our schedules aligned, that you are actually in the country because you're a busy you. man. You, you travel quite a bit. Yeah. And it was so exciting that you were able to just be here with us. Uh, Pastor Noel, welcome to Fearless. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited and delighted Amen. to be here. It's a privilege and an honor. Amen. Thank you. So we're going to hear your story. And okay. that's kind of what I, I thought would be exciting for us because there's something, I remember the first time I had you and you told your story. I went home thinking, what have I been doing all my life? Uh, it, it was a radical, radical story. So maybe just tell us a bit about yourself and maybe your okay. family as well, just so people get to, to know who you are. All right. So I am... Noel Manufo. Um, I currently am based here in Nairobi. I come from the land of, of Fufu, Fufu and, and Pepe. <laughs> and Pepe. I went one time to, I saw Pepe soup being advertised around my area. I was so excited, I went to buy some. And when I brought it home, my wife and I, we tasted it. We couldn't find the Pepe. My wife said, this is the one we use to wash our eyes when Pepe enters. <laughs> you know, so truly. I, 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 had, I had in Nigeria, we went to Nigeria, and when we became close enough to our friends there, they were honest to tell us what they really think of people who don't eat Pepe in their food. <laughs> and they say, in Nigeria, if you don't use hot, and Pepe is hot, hot, extra yes. hot, extra hot spice. And they say people who don't take extra hot spice in their food, they call them pepeles. Pe yeah, it's... Pepeles. Yeah, it's like... Tell yeah. your neighbor pepeles. <laughs> in other words, it's like you're not strong. You have nothing to offer. <laughs> pepeles. Next time you want to tell somebody who's... Someone who's making you happy, just say pepeles. <laughs> but make sure you have pepe yourself before you say that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so I'm based here now. Um, came to plant a church here. And... Um, I have four kids, yeah. uh, and um, together with my lovely wife, we oversee them, and they are following us Amen. as we follow Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, Hallelujah. Great. Uh, are your kids here? Or in, in they a, are all here. Wow. One of them. So the, when people go online, they sometimes find that I have two kids, and then they wonder why I say I have four kids, but we adopted two kids, one when we got here. and One, one when you got here. Yes. Wow. I have a Kenyan daughter. Amen. I love it. <laughs> that makes you, that makes you half, half Kenyan. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell us a bit about your church before you really began this understanding of kingdom and discipleship. What was, what, what was the church like? Because uh, in my understanding, it was a pretty yeah. successful church. Yes. So um, in uh, the year 2002, I took over the leadership of a local assembly. We were about 120 then. Um, and over a 10-year period, it grew to about 3,000 people. Wow. Um, but the challenge was, as we grew, those who were in my immediate circle and the immediate circle of um, my immediate leaders, yeah. we saw that the same spirit of discipleship and growth was happening, and that accounted for maybe about 120 people to, to 150 so but, you had that core team. Yes, that core team. That they were still, growing. They were, if you, if you, they, they would wake up at 4.30 to pray. Yeah. They would. 
And because we were used to that when we were smaller, we just 120, everybody knew everyone, we could do that. But as we grew, we kind of lost that discipleship flavor. Yes. And we moved, we went from raising movement makers to attraction specialists. <laughs> you know, so we did things to attract the crowd. We did things, you know, we would have um, the best singers, the guest singers, the everything. And there's nothing wrong with those things. Yeah. But it became the sub, the, it was more about the form and not the substance. Yeah. Yeah. And so there was... So out of uh, 3,000, you've only got a three, 120 that 120, you can say these yeah, ones are that, growing. Yeah. Do I did a little better than Jesus, though. He, <laughs> he had 25,000 and 120 <laughs> remained. So that was comforting. But it's, it's, it's always the case. Um, th my heart began to yearn. One day I was, it was after service, during service rather. So I went out. I just had this feeling to go out. So I went out to the, you know, outside the auditorium and I found these guys who were, they came to church and they were making jests of what was going on inside. And they were members. Ah. And so, I, and I walked up and I said, what are you guys doing here? They were like, we just came to flex and all of that. And my heart just sank. Yeah. You know, that what are we raising? What are we doing? You know, yeah. so, so it's that moment when as a pastor you see the fruit exactly. and it's not what you wanted. It's not what we wanted. Yeah. So I began to pray about it. And um, so there was this drive towards discipleship that we needed to like, focus on and started seeking how to get that done. And that's what led to where we are now, the transitioning from the mega church mindset to a discipleship focused movement making um, church mindset. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so how do you, first of all, I feel you because I've been there. Yeah. I think any, any, it's, it's, sometimes it takes a crisis to want to break something that's, that's working. And they say if it ain't broke, don't break it. But I think many times you, as a pastor, you can look at your results and then go, oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, uh, not what we started out. It's not what I started out to yeah. wanting. So what, what then did you do? You realize this is not what I want to do and you decide I have to shift this thing. How did you go about doing that and what, were the, what, are, what are some of the challenges maybe you faced as you did that? Okay, so um, first of all, we knew we needed to, we realized that those who were close to the center were actually changing. They were, they were growing, they were becoming. It was those who were farther away and there was no system to make sure everyone is following someone like you were talking about earlier. So the first thing was to start developing systems and we really struggled with that. I think for me personally, and maybe this will help someone, um, there's, when you have 3,000 people who say pastor, sir, there is something it does to you. Yeah. There's a recognition you have in the land. Yes. You have your name is known. Man of God. Man of God, uh -huh. you know. Um, you walk into, you know, so you can become addicted to that, you know, and find it difficult to yield, to raise people who others are not calling your name. They are calling the names of those uh -huh. other people, you uh -huh. know. And so you have to be okay. You have to be willing to all of a sudden have this 120, 150 people that are calling your name. But they have their own 120s and 150s who are following them as they are following you. Yeah. So there's loyalty all the way, but this is following this and this is following that. Um, so for me, it was, there was that, that struggle. Um, there were certain accolades yeah. that were withdrawn yes. by the uh, uh, people around me. I was no longer the... So let me explain. I, we, we, we left to go start another church. Ah, so you yes. left the church. We left people. that church. Um, even though now they have also adjusted and are running the same movement making system. But we left to go start another church. So you were leading a church and then you decided, yes. okay, I need to stop this. I wasn't the, I wasn't the lead pastor okay. of the church. And I, I'm going to stop and just go and start what I sense God is putting go in Go and my start hand. somewhere else. So it's this new stuff now. I remember we came across a um, new thing. They came, had a, a conference. And we were part of that training. And from that um, meeting, we, it was the first time we could see a structure that could work. 
Um, I think looking back now, the greatest thing that solved that problem and allows for a church to become big and still be strong in discipleship, um, all these years of studying about it is the missional community. Yeah. The idea of a missional community literally, um, and that's not a cell. I hope I can say that. It's different from, oh, a cell group and yes. all of that. Because we had a challenge, for instance, um, and why we began to call our groups missional communities. Because nomenclature matters. When we called it a cell, people would come and it was about fellowship. Yeah. So when we called it a missional community, um, we had to define what the mission is and what it is that they're about. And it was about, and we, kept, we keep saying that the missional community for us is, um, is a family committed to the growth of the family and the growth of the individuals in the family. Mm. Most of us, if you look around your families, you realize that's what family is about. Your family, your, your parents, go and tell your parents you have no plans to have children. <laughs> you will immediately see that family is committed to family growth. Yes. You know, you can tell your parents, I have no plans to build too many houses. They'll be like, mm, okay. I have no plans to travel out. Mm, okay. But say I have no plans to have children. To have children. Uh uh. Uh uh. African mother, hashtag. African mother. Uh -huh. they, <laughs> they will call meetings. My mother one time came to me and said, um, I, had, I heard you have plans to have only two kids. I said, yes. And I, I already had the two kids. Then she called me into the room. She sat beside an, uh, a socket. She said, I'm going to put my hand in this socket now and die right now. <laughs> Unless you agree that you are going to have more than two kids. <laughs> I, I think there should be, there's hashtag Nigerian mom. Nigerian mom. Very extra. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, and that's, that's, that's what missional communities do. So, the missional so, communities so, are that So, place, basically, yeah. unlike a cell, what you're saying then in a missional community, the idea is, I will die if you're not multiplying. If you're not, if you're not giving birth. If you're not living the mission. Exactly. And people beyond you put pressure. There's a, there's a social pressure that we need to bring into the church system. Where when someone says, I'm not going to have disciples, you're like, what? Are you crazy? Are, are you normal? I'm going to put my hand in, in a the socket, socket right now. And die. Unless you commit <laughs> that you're going to have disciples. You know? Um, and it's hap I find out that most places in Africa, there is a general unspoken seriousness about propagation. Yeah. About you having... In fact, there's a statement in Yoruba... I will say it in English. It says that you, you were raised. Why would you not raise? Like you are, de you are defrauding your parents. Yeah. If you don't go ahead and raise others. Because you were raised, you need to yes. also raise others. Why would you not raise others? Yeah. Pastor Ogbenga is a Yoruba. I am Igbo. So he speaks it better. But, yeah. you know. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. So basically, you then you created this space where everybody was in a missional community. Yes. And there was that expectation that everybody would multiply is that is that what you're saying multiply and lead their uh, own community eventually yeah if, if, if you ask me what the what the greatest um results we've seen so far in that transitioning yeah has been the fact that now we have the majority of people thinking about multiplying it's no longer just left to you. Yeah. It's not individualistic. You can't say, well, I don't want to. It is now that there is a, a, a cultural um, expectation, spiritual culture now, yes. expectation that you must So the majority, multiply. I mean, what an amazing thing. You are in a church where the majority of people want to, majority of people want to be disciples. Exactly. exactly. I love that. Exactly. So we have to start, can, let me say this, you have to, I've been thinking about this. That one of the challenges, for instance, for me was in trying to balance the few with the many. 
Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. And yeah. the chosen were basically the ones that responded, you know, to the, the call. call. Yeah. And what I found out that when you want to do something like that, there is this many that if you are paying attention to them, you will not, you will not go. You yeah. know, M Moses sent out 12 spies. What if he just sent out two? Hmm. Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. They probably would have made it to the promised land. So when, when it was Joshua's turn to send out spies, he, he sent, sent out, out two. two. <laughs> he didn't send out a crowd. You know, because sometimes <laughs> Moses said, let me make sure that everyone in the tribe is represented. Did. Joshua said, let me send people who can see. Oh, come on, somebody. Wow. You know, so Joshua was willing to, he didn't discard the whole of Israel, but he was willing to go with the two. Yeah, yeah. And those two came back with good reports, and they were able to so good. Uh, move into so good. the place. Sometimes when you want to start something like that, you have this few that can see what you're seeing. While not discarding, discarding the rest, you need to learn to start with them yeah. and focus on them. Sometimes you find that the, mo the, the many will cross over, yeah. and sometimes, well... Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> now, Pastor, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, one thing that is interesting that you're saying, because I feel like that's a challenge that many people will face. When it comes to discipleship, people say, but this will be slow. Mm. If I'm a pastor and I'm focusing, I'm giving, because that's what Jesus does, isn't it? Yeah. He gives majority of his time in the, in the Gospels to 12. And he sort of, has, he, has, he has all the thousands following, and he has the 120 and all the others, mm -hmm. but these 12 he gives himself to. And many people will say, but that's so slow. You know, uh, I've got a church. I mean, you're right. It is prestigious to have... Yeah, some, so some. I'm a church planter. I want to have the place full. Mm. I want to have good music and have a thousand people in the door. It, it, it's more prestigious. It's, it's, there's an addiction to that. I, I, I fully agree with you. Um, I, I, I recently came across um, an article uh, uh, online, and it was talking about, the, about thinking long term. So he said, the guy said, um, the, the war, the Vietnam War, he asked the people who won the Vietnam War, and they said the Viet Congs. They, you know, America lost the Vietnam War, more or less. And he said, but in reality, America won 98% of every battle that they were involved in. Wow. So every battle that happened during that war, America won 98% of it. But at the end of the day, the Viet Congs still won the war. Why is that? And he said, why? said, because America was in it for the short term. They were in it for the long term. Wow. They were going to be here. You, you either kill all of us or you will pack up and go and we will continue. So we need to start thinking long term. Jesus, after three years, would have been considered a failure by today's standards. Yes. Because in the upper room, he had 120. He would probably have had depression if it was a typical pastor today. <laughs> Because he would have said, I have seen 25,000 people in one meeting. And now I have 120. And now I have 120 remaining. Yeah. You know, he would have been depressed. He would have given up. But he was willing to go with the few. And now the, the, great, the great thing about it was, when you go with the few, you can multiply the few. So now he has 3,000 after a while. Then it, it became more and more and more. And they were made up of people who took the pattern of the few, yes. 120 that were in, if he had gone with the 25,000 and insisted that every tribe must be represented yeah. like Moses did, he would still be struggling with going from 25,000 to 30,000. Yeah. 2,000 years later. Yeah. Yeah. If it wow. still existed. Yeah. But now it's in the billions. Now it's in the millions. And, and hopefully, I'm hoping it's in the billions. Although, when you start thinking of convert and discipleship, yeah. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> there are many converts in that number. <laughs> it will be in the billions in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, now, amen. It, it's interesting because you, I mean, out of this realization, because I, I imagine it wasn't as easy for people. How was it taken? Because I'm thinking you're in a country where big is, I don't know, any, there are some people from Texas here. In America, they say Texas, everything is big. Big. In Africa, we say Nigeria, everything is everything big. Everything is big, yeah. How, how are you seen as you did that? Was that challenging? It was, it was a huge, huge challenge. And I, I must admit, it also affected me. In fact, if I, 
were to look back, um, it slowed things down because you want to go in a direction that God is leading you and then um, certain, certain repercussions from the fact that you're no longer going for the big. In Nigeria, the dressing is big. You know, this is where you do things like this. Yeah. For one. <laughs> one, one um, and all of that. So, but, so there is that. In transitioning, I, one of the things that struck me was the first time I announced that we're going to start planting churches all over. You know, you would expect people would go, yay, and all that. And they were like, hmm. So I knew immediately we had a culture issue. <laughs> we had a culture issue that we needed to address. So I t- we took a year. Normally in Nigeria, you have this. At the beginning of every year, you have, um, it's our year of um, I- increase, supernatural the year increase. year of increase. A year of amazing growth. A year of amazing prosperity and all that. And usually most pastors will look for something that is really very catchy. Um, year of double-double, you know? <laughs> Um, so that, that year, I was saying, God, what's the focus this year? God said, announce to them, it will be a year of missional focus. Yes. You know, so, and, you know, I stood up on the altar, 31st of December. I said, this will be a year of missional focus. And people were already ready to shout, hey, man. <laughs> and they were like, yeah. <laughs> I had to take a few, a few, some time to teach on, um, the, 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 the benefits of missional focus and all that. But that whole year, it was a missional focus. We didn't plant any church. That year, we just immediately uh, began to teach about um, the other. Wow. You know, that, that person who, Jesus said, I have sheep that are not of this fold. Yes. There, there's that other person that is out there and we need to. By the end of the year, um, that, that shift began to happen. Um, it's still an ongoing process because when they come in to a location they they hear this but what's around us still tells us um some things and then there's some advantages some things you can do as a large church you know uh, that are attractive you know um so right now i must say that i'm not i'm not as radically anti-large church yeah. as i was when i started um because of the missional community. Yes. If a large church is made up of missional communities, they can do what um, a small church, discipleship-wise, yes. will be able to accomplish. I love that. Now, yeah. you, uh, tell us the story about, I was really blown away by your passion to plant a church in Nairobi and how you went about that. I thought that was just radical. Yeah, so I came to Nairobi without, um, without a luggage. Uh, I had just my, what do you call it? The, the little carry-on. Carry, carry-on, yeah. I have a problem with waiting for luggage after I arrive somewhere. So I came in with that, um, found a place, and I was alone. There was no um, person I knew here um, close enough. So um, we began, first of all, with a training. We wanted to get some persons of peace. So we did a training. So you made, okay, so... I hope you guys are tracking with this. Mm. God has told you to plant a church in a foreign country, so you take your carry-on. <laughs> don't carry luggage. This is very scriptural, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You show up. You don't know anybody in the city. So, okay, so then you decided you have to have find that core team. Yeah, that core team. So we did a training. We call it Life Development Program. Um, and basically, we're talking about how to, make, how to have a better life. Yeah. And so but we, we started it with fulfilling your purpose, which is... The mission of Jesus. We tied the purpose of each individual to the mission. Um, the idea is that you are part of a body. My, my body cannot be called to pastor and my head is called to something else. Hey. Um, so whatever calling my head has, my body has. Yeah. And so our oh. purpose is defined by the purpose of Jesus. Yeah. So we might have different roles to play, just like my hand has a different role, but if my body says we want to go to Kilimani. My hand can't say, I let, choose to stay, stay a bit. in Siokimau. <laughs> you know, so, so your purpose is defined by the purpose of the head. And you might now have different platforms and different plants. I know the plants, plural. Yeah. But you find out that the word calling is usually singular. You know. Wow. So, so, um, so, how, so you've, started, you've, you've got this course. 
Yes. But you're in a foreign country, you don't know anybody. Yeah, we advertised. So we advertised on social media. We is I. I, you and the Holy, <laughs> yeah, you and I, the Holy Spirit. I, 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 with the fa- God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> the, four, we the, the four of you advertised. Yes, okay. in the so, on social media, um, we had about seventy, eighty people that indicated interest. Kenyans. Yes. Okay. Um, seventy, eighty people that indicated interest. Then there's a church planter here who's been wondering how to grow their church. Mm. No, but they came in because you know life development program. They didn't know it was a yeah. Christian program. You didn't tell them come so to church. So we didn't tell them that. So, come, to, come to our church, <laughs> Holy Spirit filled service. No, it was, so we tried to, I, I think when you go to a place, you need to ask yourself, Jesus, when he went out, first started healing the sick, you know, and meeting needs, and then now brought a message. Wow. And he said, when you go, first heal the sick, then say to them, the kingdom of God has come. Oh, I love it. You know, so we said, okay, what are the needs we saw around people not knowing how to handle life, life issues? Uh, marriage. Uh, so we came up with different things, how to, how to attract a spouse. Hey, uh, some people want to sign up for the course. <laughs> how to attract a spouse, uh, the DAP principle, discover, accept, package, present. So you advertise this online. Advertise this online. And 80 um, people, people came express in, interest. Close to 120, eventually 40 did the training to the end. One four. Or four. 40. 40. Four zero. Wow. Four zero did the training to the end, and then 12 of them, um, I called for a meeting, physical meeting, 12 of them showed up, um, and the 12 were all ladies, by the way. Wow. And something about Kenya, ladies seem to be like... They're focused. Uh, let me leave Pastor, that alone. Pastor Simon okay. is here to make that change. He, he, he's rallying the men. Amen. So 12 of them came in um, for, the tra- for the meeting, and I shared with them that, well, we want to start a church. Some of you may have a church already you attend. Go to those churches. But if, you are, if this training has made you closer to God and you're looking for where to attend, come in. So I told them to meet me the next Saturday. Um, and then the next Saturday, they came with their friends. Wow. Um, and they met in my sitting room. So um, we had about 24 people. And that 24, 25 continued for a while. It was like the missional community. Yeah. And eventually, we grew, extended into the hundreds, and then we started a full normal church services on Sunday with all of that. And um, I love that. Looking to plant it more. demystifies disciple making. You, exactly. You just call people, meet a need, and then start discipling them. You made a powerful statement here today, which is something um, God spoke to me about. He said, um, I told my people, go make disciples and I will build a church. Yeah. So they flip that. They say, let me build a church, and hopefully God will make um, disciples. I personally feel like if every, and this may sound radical, and I, I apologize if it does to some people, but I'm convinced that if every believer will, will engage with the commission of Jesus the way he intended, yeah. we will all be church planters. And just, just, just hold on. I don't think they had. <laughs> Just say it again. Maybe the Nigerian accent. <laughs> say it slowly so they can hear. Okay, so if I am, every I believer. Am, I am convinced yeah. that if every believer will fulfill and engage with the mission of Jesus the way he intended, we will all be church planters. Wow. And the reason is because if you look at what Jesus said, he said, John 15, 16, go make Decide. He, said, he said, you have not chosen me. Yeah, I Sometimes chose we think we chose him. No, no. he chose us. Yes. We didn't have an option. Yeah. We were drowning. Somebody threw a rope. What option do you have? We grab the rope. You grab the rope. You didn't choose. The person who had the option to walk away and let you drown was him. But decided to save you. He chose you. So he said, you have not chosen, but I have chosen you and ordained you to go bring forth fruit. fruit. But he didn't stop there. If he stopped there, we could just go on the streets, get people saved, and move on. But that your fruit should Last. remain. Yes. If anybody will have fruit and the fruit remains, they will end up having a church without planning it. Wow. Um, my, dad, my dad never said, let me have 300 people that bear my son name, Manufo. Yeah. He just 
had me and three others. And now I have several others. And my brothers and sister has several others. And my dad, just by looking out, what, you know, looking after me, yes. ends up having, if this was spiritual, a church. Wow. You know. It is a na- it's a nature of humanity to have, exactly. to multiply. Ex- exactly. And, oh. and the fact that he, what did he do? He just kept me from being, made me remain. Yeah. When sickness came against me and I was going to die, he solved that. So just making me remain. Having me and keeping me yeah. led to where we are. 50 years from now and the way we are in Nigeria, we will, you, <laughs> you'll get Manufo to will be a whole <laughs> large crowd of people, you know. Um, wow. But it's also a long-term thing yeah. in, in a sense. So I'm not saying you will plant a church in two months, in three months, you know. But that place where we, we say to ourselves, I must have people that I birth. And they also must remain. And being able to um, be willing to go through the birthing process. Let me explain that a little bit. Um, A child, conception to birth, naturally, is nine months. And we don't don't force babies out of the womb. You know? But we celebrate. A woman says, I'm pregnant. You're like, whoa! We should be able to celebrate the, the fertilization. Celebrate the fact that I met someone, presented the gospel mm. to that person. And the person received the gospel. Yeah. It's, it's in a missional community somewhere, it's been that there is a, what's the word? There is an incubation going on. Yes. He's meeting believers and all that. So sometimes we are very quick, if they have not shown up in church, the next Sunday, we are like, you are not serious, you know. Yeah. And we 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 act in ways to abort Oof. the process. That whole process. Yeah. You know, one of the things God began to share with me is, it, it's okay. Let them be there, and let them continue to be to be receiving. And there, there's a natural movement that happens as they begin to show up. I'm a very. This may be natural for some people, but I'm a very. I'm Nigerian. <laughs> it's like it has to happen in a week, in two weeks, in three weeks. And sometimes it takes a while, but gradually. So we began to do that, and gradually you see people now transiting into um, the church proper and being discipled. Yeah. I think the balance is knowing what it is we want to do, disciples, but also allowing for transitioning into where people are, are learning, hearing. Um, the attraction for me when I came here, what attracted people was the message of God wants to meet your needs. God wants you yeah. to have good marriages. God wants to increase your income. So they came. And we said, well, he wants to do all that, but it's beyond that. Yes. He wants to use you to do something that this world has never seen before. Amen. Amen. You know? And then they were like, whoa, really, myself? And then the church, the church is born with those ones wow. who are willing to go for that. Yeah. Wow, wow. Now, it's interesting because you've kind of, I, my prayer is that you've sort of demystified something here because when I, yeah. when I made the announcement, I said, if you, if you didn't stand up when I said pastor, uh, you didn't understand who you are. Mm-hmm. You've said something very powerful because there's something about our assignment as humans. If you understand it, yeah. if you get it, you will be a church planter. Because in our minds, a church planter is this anointed, um, what, fire-breathing, charismatic. Man of God. M- anointed, you know, appointed, ascended, and awaited. Speaks amazingly. Aha, those ones. <laughs> and, 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 and I think what you're saying is every person. You know, it's interesting. I remember going to, I, I talked about Pastor Jimmy's church. I went to Pastor Jimmy's church one day. He, made an, he said, how many of you are going to plant churches? I don't know if you remember that, Pasi. Like everybody's hand in the church went up. Wow. And I feel like that's wow. the thing that we're lacking in the church in East Africa, the understanding of the missional nature of the calling of Jesus on our lives. The understanding that the king did not save us to just be happy. That's he saved true. us to become agents of his mission. And, and, and maybe that's just something that I feel like you've been able to do with your people is beginning to, to draw that out of your people. That's and true. even to model as a pastor because I think one of the things you're modeling for them when you come not as a preacher, but as a businessman. 
as a man, as a coach. Mm. That's what you came into Kenya yeah. as. And I think you came in as a student legally. Yes. Um, it, yes. Um, praise God. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's interesting that you're modeling that to your people that, you know, yeah. anyone can do this. This is not pastoral I, I, work. It is actually yes. Christian work. I, one of the things we need to think about is over the years we've changed, we've, we've changed the way words when the, the early church walked the earth. Um, when they were scattered abroad, what kind of questions were they asking? When they were scattered from Jerusalem, were they saying, who amongst us is a pastor? <laughs> so that we can start, start a, church. a church. Is anybody God has told you an apostle? Yeah. So that we can start a church around Who is you. called? Who is, who who is, is calling? Who has calling? <laughs> you know? They just felt, the Bible says they went about preaching. preaching. Yeah. And, and so when they, when, when they focused on preaching and letting those people reached remain. Yes. Churches were born. And in fact, there were churches that would start and then they will now send the men of God from the center to come pray for them. And, and inspect to make sure everything is okay. <laughs> yes, you see that, okay, they are running things the way it was supposed to run. But they were going about starting churches. I think that two things need to happen, if you ask me. I think the, the leaders need to start being servants. And the servants need to start being leaders. Wow. We need to like meet there. The, the leaders should stop. How many, you know, leaders should still be having persons of peace. Yes. You know, yesterday I was, I went bowling with someone who was a person of peace. Um, and I have a church and they are having persons of peace. But this person I met her online and I said, oh, can we go bowling? She said she likes bowling. I said, let's go bowling. Uh, Pastor Benga saw me, you know, I was bowling. She doesn't even know I'm a pastor. She knows me as a life coach. So while we were bowling and all that, she told me, you know, I, I like you. And I, I said, oh, great, great, great. She said, you are so different. So I said to her, I said, can I say something to you? God sent me to you. This was over food now. We had finished bowling, we were eating. I said, God sent me to you. And I told her a few things as a, you know, based on my own gifting, word of knowledge, that was going on in her life. And she started crying. She said, the prayer of my mother is what is being answered right now. Hmm. He, said, he said, she now called me pastor for the first time. She said, pastor, can I tell you the truth? I plan to come here and get you to fall for me. Ah. True story. And I was ready to do anything with you. And I was 10 minutes away from telling you, all right, it's time. Let's go do something. And you told me my whole life in, in uh, uh, a minute. Wow. And she started crying. She said, I just finished smoking weed. And she said, what do I do next? I said, well, you need to come to Christ. But the point I'm making is, I think there's a need to keep exemplifying that. So as a pastor, I need to keep... As, as a pastor, you need to keep showing that. In your teachings, you're like, yeah, last week I was with, you know, I was talking to a person of peace. And they are hearing all of that going on. That I think, on the other hand, to those who feel, I can't lead. You know, I can't, I can't lead a church. Yeah. You need to realize it's simply a multiplication of this that ends up becoming a church. Wow. You know, at the end of the day. I love it. Praise God. I love it. Thank you so much. Pa Pastor, I really would love for you to pray for us. Um, there are some people here who are um, pastors, leading congregations, and maybe are hearing this and there's a stirring in their hearts. And they're thinking, you know, maybe like I did at one point, I don't want to be a CEO of a large organization. I want to be a discipler. I want to raise sons and daughters who are going to impact the kingdom. And maybe there's somebody here who's been really convicted by your words and is saying, I, I want to take the first steps towards that. But maybe there's somebody here who's also been a person who said, pastor is not me. Pastor is those people up on stage. And today they've been convicted by your word and are hearing God say, no, no, I died for you as well. Mm -hmm. That you will actually represent me as well. And, and I'd love for you to just release a blessing over us. Amen. as God begins to work these things into our heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you 
We celebrate you. We honor you. We worship you. When we look at the scriptures and we look at your word, we see that you have an amazing plan. A plan, a plan that showcases your wisdom, showcases your passion for souls. Lord, I'm, I stand before you and I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice. Mm. And I pray that you will meet them where they are. Those who have outgrown the mission mm. in their minds. They are bigger than it. They've done it. They've moved on. Help them to roll back and be engaged with the mission. Yes, Lord. Those who feel that they are too small for the mission, I pray that you will help them see who they are mm. in you. That they will rise up and start blessing and start touching lives and start healing and therefore bring people to salvation and to the knowledge of the truth. Mm. Make them converts and disciple them. Mm. that they be discipled. Father, I pray that there will be divinely orchestrated events mm. as you have done for several of us standing here today mm. where we had no other option but to recognize that you have given us a mission. Yeah. I pray for such divinely orchestrated events mm. to multiply in this house. Let there be people who will go to sleep and if what they need is a vision, give them a vision. Yes. What they need is you speaking to them. Lord, speak to them in the way that they will hear it. For you are the God who has called. And you have called all of us to the mission. Yeah. We thank you for this, Lord. I pray for courage and strength to be multiplied. And I pray for successes. Mm -hmm. Successes to be multiplied. That we can stand on one success and look to the next success. Mm -hmm. In the mission of Jesus. It's in Jesus' mighty and precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Let's appreciate Pastor Noel. It's great to have you, Pastor Noel. Thank you. Welcome. I appreciate so it. So good.